These thoughts I give to you, my friend. May your heart be happy. May you find peace of mind. May the one. It's our musical segment, our musical spotlight, and uh, that lovely song is from my next guest, who happens to be a listener and a longtime friend of the Jordan Rich Show. His name is Sammy Stray, and you can find him at samstraysongs.com. I want to call you, sir, the Prince of Doo-Wop, because you sound great, uh, whether you're doing oldies or new ones. Hi there, Sammy. <laughs> Hello, Jordan. Hello, everybody. That sounds so cute. I like that yeah, the prince, we'll make you the prince. Up. And you've got a you've got a princess named Bernadette there, don't you? Yes, Bernadette. Uh, she's a lovely lady, and uh, she's a wonderful singer, also. Sam, over the years, you've sent me a lot of clips of your music, and we've dropped them in from time to time. People love them. And let's talk about you. When did you start making music? Wow, I'm going way back. The cobwebs in my mind are starting to <laughs> fray. I have to say, back in the, like 1954, I was like 14. There's my age, everybody. And I started singing with three fellas in junior high school, and we had a wonderful music teacher that hooked us up. And we were so good as a as a group that uh, we won several contests. We won on to, uh, let's see, Ted Mack Amateur Hour, but they wouldn't take us for some reason. I think it had to do with me singing with three black guys, unfortunately. Mm. We were so good. It was too early at the time for that. A couple of years later, there was another group on there, you know, mixed, and they yeah. were accepted. It was a couple of years. I was two years too, too soon. It, it's interesting. At that point in the musical uh, history of America, there were so many groups popping up. Kids, young kids would, would sing in the hallways of the schools, and it was a great time to be a singer, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, that was us. We were on the corner, we were in the hallways, we were in the boys' room, just harmonizing, and it was so much fun. It was the beginning of this sound of doo-wop. So who were the artists that you were listening to on the radio that inspired you? Oh, I have to say, well, prior, prior to the groups, it, well, I was into country music, but then uh, when I met these fellas, I they taught, you know, they showed me the <clears throat> type of music, rhythm and blues, and... Uh, the first groups I knew of was the Valentines, the Cadillacs, and uh, the Hot Tones, and they just mm. blew me away, and I just wanted to be like those guys. I'm talking here with my buddy Sam Stray. He's such a great talent. He's in New Jersey, and uh, he and I have talked for for many, many years on and off the air. He's been such a great supporter of the show, and I uh, just wanted to highlight you in our musical spotlight. So uh, through the 50s, you're doing this, and you've never stopped writing. Uh, you've been writing since then, haven't you? Well, that, back in 54, I wrote my first song with the group. Uh, it was called She's My Baby, Yes, She Is. It was an up-tempo, and that was the beginning. And it just kept going and going. And uh, I, in high school, I wrote my first song there was... Uh, I'm so unhappy. I broke up with my girlfriend at the time, and the, the mm. words and the music <laughs> just came out. Now, at that time, I couldn't play piano or guitar. Everything came out of my head, and uh, the music teacher in the school, Mr. Malpas, he would write the notes down for me, and he couldn't believe that I could write out of my head like that without mm. playing an instrument. It was great to hear. So did you read music then, or did you? how did you do that? No, I couldn't read at all. That's why I would go to my... Uh, music teacher yeah. and he would write everything wow. down for me but i eventually taught myself piano guitar and how to read and i'm i'm doing a lot better now <laughs> talking with sam stray his website samstraysongs.com people love the sound that smooth harmonic sound of the 50s and even though it is the 50s a long time ago it's amazing it, it that sound shows up in movies and television shows and every once in a while on pbs you'll see the guys from that era or Close to that era, come back, and they're a big hit. Oh, I tell you, it's it's 
It's never died. In fact, on the net, on YouTube, there's so much do up in so many groups. And I'm happy to say I have a lot of my music on YouTube. Mm. And uh, American Graffiti, they all had 50s music. And any movie that comes out with 50s music is very popular. Mm -hmm. Like the Deuce of Spades I was telling you about, I have three songs in there. And most of the music is from the 50s and Hot Rods. And it's quite a movie. I'm very proud so, to be a part of it. So, Sammy, uh, through the years, you've been a performer as well. Do you still get out there and perform much? Uh, the only performance I do here is uh, where I live. We have a clubhouse that I do get up and sing sometime, and they put on shows. And, uh, uh, you know, if I ever got a call to go out and perform, I would be glad to do it, you know. In fact, I'm thinking of hooking up with some fellas and do some oldie shows. Cause we I had, think you uh, should. We had a couple semi-hits back in the 60s. Uh, they didn't make it all the way due to the Beatles coming out and just knocking us out of the box because we were on tour and we had to stop. <laughs> I was going to say, that that was a bit of a roadblock for a lot of guys in, in the U.S. when the Beatles came along. But, boy, that must have been fun. Where, well, you remember touring and how far west or east you went? Uh, we did the tri-state area. I remember going to uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania, in a, in a very nice hotel there. And uh, we were singing for Gone Records at the time, unfortunately. <laughs> They went bankrupt and ended our tour. <laughs> in the middle of the tour? <laughs> yeah, in the middle of the tour. I've always been a day early or a day late. And no, not in my book. Been, my luck hasn't <laughs> been too great, but I've had some good luck. Let's, let's do this. Let's play a little more before we continue chatting. Uh, this is called doo Serenade. You sent this to me a while back, and it's a great one. I played it. Tell me about the song and when you wrote it and why. Well... Like I said, there's so much uh, doo-wop on the net that uh, I would listen to every group and all the groups that I admire, and I wonder what happened to them. And I would flash back to the corner when we were singing in Linden, New Jersey, on Elizabeth Avenue there, and uh, it would be 2, 3 in the morning, the cop would come by and says, don't worry, guys, you, you don't have to go home yet. You sound too good. So I just <laughs> said, well, that's a doo-wop serenade, and I just the music and just flowed out in the words and lyrics and... Mm -hmm. It just came out so nice. Well, let's listen to a bit of it here. Do up serenade with my friend Sammy Stray. Oh. Listening to the Jordan Ridge Show, that is Sammy Stray. He's been a friend of mine on the uh, on the phones for a long time. That's Doo Wop Serenade. He's been writing songs since the '50s. Great voice, and his voice, uh, your voice, I should say, is very, very smooth and and harmonic. Did you have like a couple of guys? You mentioned those first three gentlemen you played with, who you just you say this was I was meant to sing with this guy or that girl or whatever. Does that work for you? Oh, sure, absolutely. After uh, in, in high school, I, I formed a new group we were called the Uniques, Wayne Tedlin, Richie Saldo, and, and Raymond. And uh, we, like I said, we had gone to record for a couple of record companies, but uh, we just had some bad luck. It's, a, it's, come, a, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing today. You mentioned even record companies. People scratch their head because most artists, very few are represented by record companies anymore. Most of them are independent and putting this stuff on CD Baby and trying to get recognized in other ways. In the old days, you had to get radio play to get any kind of recognition. Oh, yes, that's pretty difficult today, too. And uh, I have my own record label, Sweet Shop Records, and I, I put everything out on CD Baby and iTunes by myself. And uh, it's kind of lonely up here in the studio. Well, do you have any chance to sing with your wife, uh, Bernadette? Oh, yeah, we have done a couple of duets. I've recorded, uh, we did a a cover of uh, 
let's see, uh, Nat King Cole and his daughter. Unforgettable. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I bet it was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we couldn't believe it at the time. Yeah. We sounded that good. In fact, uh, we did it at our clubhouse, and it went over very well. And, of course, Christmas means a lot to you, and when you write Christmas music, it's instant perennial in many cases. We're going to play one before we wrap up here, but how many Christmas songs have you written? Do you know? Uh, a total of three Christmas songs, Jordan. I always wanted to write a Christmas song, and they didn't happen for me until a couple of years ago when my son passed away, and I was inspired, and and I'm happy to say that I'm happy to finally have written three Christmas songs that I, I think everybody would enjoy. You know, I'd love to play before we wrap up and go to the break. There's no place like home for Christmas. That's one of my favorites of yours. At the time, I had the soldiers and the troops in my mind that their loved ones were waiting for them to come home for Christmas, and they made a wish, and the words just came through just beautifully for me. And I, and I, I think the song is should be out there in the world for everybody to hear. So the official title again is? I Wish You Were Coming Home for Christmas. Okay, well, that's the one. I, I, I know it from the line in the... Uh in the in the song but listen up we'll play that but before we do sammy i want to wish you a very happy christmas and holiday season and i just want you to know i i really appreciate all of your contributions to the show over the years and and you being such a nice guy and getting in touch as you do jordan i i am so thankful for all you do for everybody and people that are in the business and just trying to get by and uh I wish I had your energy, and I really appreciate <laughs> this. It's a wonderful thing for me to talk to you. Well, I wish I could sing in just one quarter as well as you do. Oh, you have got a great voice, Sam. All the best to you and Bernadette, okay? Thank you, everybody. All have right. a Merry Christmas. SamStraySongs.com. That's S-A-M-S-T-R-A-Y. Sam Stray Songs. Let's listen to a little bit of his Christmas tune that we talked about as we go to break. This is The Jordan Rich Show. There's no place like home for Christmas. I wish you were coming home for Christmas to share the holiday with me. The only Christmas gift I'm longing to receive is having you on Christmas Eve. You were coming home for Christmas to help me decorate the tree, the pretty tree. I made a Christmas wish. If it comes true for me, what a wonderful Christmas it will be. I wrapped up all your presents, strung lights around. Tree. That's where I'll be waiting till you do what come home do what to me do what do what do I wish you were coming home for Christmas to be with friends and family if only for a while if I could see your smile what a wonderful christmas it will be 